Welcome back everyone, this is Aerophelon playing Dungeon Breaker, and last time we explored enough of the second layer of the ruins to find a shortcut teleporter, which of course is behind us when we enter. But that warps us straight up to the fourth floor from the first floor. So let's have a more of a look around here. Looks like this level is more long hallways. Uh, this might connect to the other path. Uh, this is zigging and zagging. Going to the corner to fill out the walls. Yeah, the monsters up here are definitely stronger than the ones on the lower levels, which you'd expect. Okay, so there's a little something in here. And further up. Should I keep exploring the four Eh, yeah, let's keep going here for now. Ah, another new monster girl, the Antenna Mage. You see a magician's sort of outfit plus that weird hair thing that apparently acts as an antenna. But she did not offer to join. It is a fairly low probability. Okay, that's just a bit of nothing. Meanwhile, I'm finding that it's a good idea to prioritize taking out the mages because they have some fairly powerful spells. I'm guessing there'll be another healing point up here somewhere. Oh, here we have the Antenna Mage joining, so that's another new ally. But yeah, the general way dungeons work is you explore for a while, then you find... <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you explore for a while, then you find a healing spot before a boss. So there should be one up here somewhere. But until then, it looks like we're running into a lot of... Yeah, a lot of twisty little passages and dead ends. That's some kind of explosive. I don't really use those. Maybe I should. Another turn. This will either be stairs or another dead end. And it is stairs. I'm hoping to find a healing point before too long so I can go back and... Or so I can heal up, go back, keep exploring. And here we are. So probably there's a boss through that door. Or maybe this one. Or that one. There you go, Glyss. We do have a healing point and several doors. A mile I am finding, as I seem to recall, having found the first time I played this. Alec has a skill called Burst Blade that hits all enemies, and it's fairly cheap and surprisingly effective. So I'm just having him use that a lot to deal with groups. And it's working out quite well. There's some more money. Speaking of which, I think I have enough to afford the Samurai Master now. Let's rush over to the healing point. And let's try down there. Okay. Looks like another dead end. So this floor is full of them. 
Ah, pourquoi me pingo And this branches out more. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how each floor has a slightly different, slightly different feel to it. Although there's dead ends here too. And probably more dead ends over on the other side. Probably just another dead end or two. Yep. Yeah, that's enough money. Let's head back to town. Okay, the monster shop. By Samurai Master, 20,000 gold, and it's done. She's not terribly talkative, that's understandable. He's doing his backed thing, blah blah tiana, blah blah blah. And done. He's asking her to show him what she's capable of. He's like, I'll do just that. Draws the blade on him. What's the meaning of this? Oh, spirit of a samurai. Yeah, basically she's saying she used the spirit of a samurai to fling off the whole monster tamer thing and negate the pact. Well then how come you're attacking me? Oh, isn't it obvious? You're going to kill the monster tamer who would use me. She's attacking, he barely dodges. Keeps attacking. We've got boss music going in the background. That's pretty nice. The third and fourth. Starting to wear out a little. Yeah, by the fifth, her pants are starting to shake. She's apparently rather weakened from spending all that time locked up. He knocks her down. Does the pack thing again. Did it work this time? Unfortunately, the pact is form. Do whatever you want. It's like, well then, I'll do just that. And so, without further ado, they begin playing Hanabi, the fireworks card game. Cooperative game where you can see everyone's cards except your own, and are trying to build up a runs of extending number of orders. It's a pretty good game, one of my favorites, actually. And just like that, already Ak is learning one of her skills. We have a choice between, I believe that's Inazuma slash, Inazuma being a flash of lightning. And this is, uh, yeah, it looks like it strikes across all the enemies. This is Ichi, Ichi Emoji, which is literally the character, that thing. So that would be like a horizontal slash. Uh, let's go with that one. I think it's basically a cheaper burst blade. And now he's saying, you know, if you really, really want to, I can release the pact and let you go now. She wondering what he's up to. Like, I just did that earlier to save my life. If you really don't want to be around me, 
then I'd rather not have you here. She's saying that's not really fair after what we just did. Or inside her head anyway. I'll take you outside of town and from there you can do what you want. Saying I owe you a debt after freeing me, so I can't just leave now. It's like you're saying this after you tried to cut me up that much? As she's claiming she was just testing his abilities. And now that they've changed the pact, he's her master. In a, you know, feudal ward samurai kind of way. It's like, okay then. But while we're here, we do have a few others. Uh, the peddler and the antenna mage, so let's start with her. She's speaking in her usual accent, which, come to think of it, we haven't really interacted with her yet. She has a fairly strong, uh, it's called a Kansai accent. It's associated with the southwestern part of Japan. It's also associated culturally with more mercantile kind of things, so it would make sense that our merchant type monster uses it. She's asking what he wants. He's asking about getting skills. It's like, well, that's just something monster tamers can do when. And we're already contracted, so... Explain that he can't do it that easily, it requires him to... So some of the others were objecting to this on the grounds that humans and monsters don't do that sort of thing. Uh, she's or yeah, I'm not going to do this cheap. Because again, money grubbing monster wants money. But it's not quite that simple. She doesn't want to be paid so much as she's saying, well, there's this rare item called the gold coin of happiness, fortune, whatever. So she's basically saying, you get that for me, you do me a favor, I do you a favor. Which I guess seems fair enough. And now my wrist read that she's asking him if to buy that from her, and in exchange she'll think about it. So special rate for him, it's only ten thousand gold. It's like that's awfully high. She gets cheap for what you're asking. It's fine, I'll pay that. But I don't believe I have that much money left at this point. Nope. So let's try talking to the Antenna Mage. I've called her, but she's not here. Maybe I'll try again later. And suddenly here she is, saying something about how tasty the tea is. I guess uh, Antenna Mage is kind of the spacing out kind of character. Yeah, and she was just kind of there and so quiet he didn't even notice. And you can hear her voice, she has that very laid back, not really paying attention kind of thing to her. Yeah, as I recall, they're actually connected through those antennas and can communicate with each other, so it's kind of like she's on the internet all the time. So he's bringing the up what he's suggesting. It's like, hey, are you listening? 
Yeah, she's in the middle of contacting the other Antanim mages to ask what they think. It's like, you can do that? Yeah, they can communicate with each other through the antennas on their heads. See, opinions are split. It's like, what, what are the other antenna mages saying? Yeah, some of them are saying he's awful good looking, so go for it. It's like, well, that makes me happy. But others are saying if you make it that easy for him, he'll get tired of you, so... And they seem to be in the majority. Uh, 70,000 out of 100,000 have that opinion. Like there's 100,000 of you? But anyway, there's a book she wants. If you bring that to her, she'll cooperate. So what's this book called? Uh, basically, it's an instruction book for your first time, so you don't mess it up. It's like, wow, I'd be really embarrassed to buy that. You can get that in the dungeon. Just kind of sneakily pick it up. Yeah, he's kind of not sure about getting used one, but... Eh, whatever. So we're getting into a in, more interesting stage of this, where instead of just asking and it happens, you have to do some kind of a little side quest first. And I think I'm going to do a little grinding. So I'll keep the recording going in case something interesting happens, but... Oh, we just randomly found that book after fighting some perfectly ordinary monsters. Alright, it would probably help if I gave them equipment. We have another scene here. Wizard armor is spacing out. On top of rock, apparently. He's asking her what she's doing and suggesting resting inside the manor if she's feeling sleepy. Karen shows up and says, yeah, this is fine for wizard armor. She knows something? Yeah, today's cloudy and kind of chilly. Like, yeah, it makes you feel kind of... Or no, he's saying it's kind of unusually cool for this season. Yeah, when it gets cold, lizard armors tend to dig holes and hibernate in the ground. But it's not the right season for hibernating, so when it's cold, it kind of sunbathe on rocks to regulate their body temperature. Now, apparently, despite being so human-seeing, they're still cold-blooded. And he's remarking on basically that. This is something you should know as a monster tamer. Have you been reading the books I've given you? Like, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, she's feeling really languid. Like, you're looking like Tina when she wakes up. Oops, here's another scene. Now here's our peddler. She has something she wants to talk about. What is it? It's like, don't look so upset. I've got something good here. Uki Uki. That's like a really happy, cheerful voice. So yeah, when you talk to me in such a cheerful voice, it's obvious you're up to something. Like, how shocking, you think about me like that? You're making me so sad I could cry. Shiku shiku. It's a crying sound effect. Like, okay, fine, what is it? 
Yes, she wants to open shop. No surprise there. What are you talking about? Got some ideas. Humans are living in such a nice city here. Because commerce. Yeah. It's like, well, considering the kind of month you are, month, commerce is kind of your specialty. Well, yes. It must be fate that I became your monster. Seeing this is a great opportunity to be a bridge between humans and monsters, don't you think? And so she's asking to be allowed to do two business in the human city. It's like, you know what? Okay, just don't do anything shady, basically. She's happy about that, except she's saying, as long as I don't get caught, it's all good. She's super thrilled to be doing business in a big human city. So, yeah, you'd expect that from the mercantile monster. Oops, it looks like we have another scene, and uh, sounds like she's basically trying to talk some people into a pyramid scheme about inviting all their friends and to make this much every month and yeah. <laughs> and she's trying to talk Tina into a thing apparently anyway. It's like, no, that sounds too good to be true. This is a really rare opportunity, so I'm sneaky about it. But since you're Master's girlfriend, you're special. It's like, girlfriend? Oh, um, no, I'm not. Not only can you sell this, you can eat it yourself. It'll make your skin nice and smooth and all. <laughs> Tina's starting to be convinced. And now it walks and he's like, what are you up to? Like, uh, nothing. <laughs> of course, she spills the beans. Yep, you... Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme. You tell all your friends, they send you money, they tell their friends, they get money from there, and so on and so on and so... Uh, yeah. And she's talking about how nice will we not have to worry about money for weapons and items and stuff. It's like... Hey, Peddler, that sounds like you're doing dirty dealing. Like, uh, no, of course not. This is totally above board. Why are you looking away then? It's like, okay, just don't sell to people I know. Fine. Wait, you're not going to tell me about the... I think that's health food. Like, you need to be a little more suspicious of people. Bonk. Ow. But anyway, I'm not sure exactly how much usable footage I have, but this feels like it's been a pretty good amount, so... For now. This has been Arafelon playing Dungeon Breaker. I'll come back next time and see what we do then. I might continue with here or I might decide to go back and try that Thief Fortress again because we have left uh, Frisia hanging with her stolen wedding ring and no progress on that. I kind of want to finish these side quests before continuing with the main quest. Anyway, hope to see you then.